Hey guys, Tisha here, and I am back for another Real Housewives of Potomac review. And I'm going to be honest, I'm going to need your help down in the comment section because I'm completely lost. <laughs> because there was far too much going on at the end of this episode with Wendy and NECA that I just got tired of taking notes and I said, I don't care. Um, if there's something that I missed, put it down below because I'm doing too many reviews tonight to be worried about this annoying show that at this point is going to drag this Wendy and NECA thing out the same way they dragged the whole situation out with Marlo and Candy in the, the Real Housewives of Atlanta. I need for them to find something else to talk about or they're gonna lose a lot of us viewers. I'm already over it. It's currently after six on Monday and I'm just now looking at this show. And I really um, am only looking at it right now and reviewing it because I'm one of those people who doesn't like to start something verse uh like episode wise and not finish it so who's to say what is going to come of this but let's go we begin the episode seeing ashley giselle and mia meeting up to go shopping for austin this is basically i'm thinking the cash trip we hear that they're going to be staying in a hotel maybe it's because they don't know how to be fair when it comes to homes but it seems like they didn't know how to be fair when it came to the hotel rooms either because I don't understand why they only got two penthouse rooms and everybody else had just basic rooms. I, I If you're going to do it for one, do it for all, my opinion. I guess because Ashley's hosting it, maybe she could have got the big room, but I didn't feel like Robin needed to get one, but we'll go into that later. Um, they talk about Wendy and NECA, of course, because what else do these ladies have to talk about? And since NECA has brought this to them, this is giving them something. Even though Giselle claims not to want to be bothered with Wendy, she still finds a way to talk about Wendy. Giselle and Ashley feel like what NECA is saying is true, that she is telling the truth because Giselle says who would make up a lie like that. And Ashley said that she had a lot of conviction. Me personally, I'd hope that she'd have a lot of conviction since she is an attorney and she does approach things like she's an attorney because a lot of what NECA says is dates and times and things of that nature. And I just want to know, does she not have any current cases that she can devote this much time to something that to me is so trivial? Because I think that this is all for a storyline. Um, this show to me isn't worth the headache that Wendy is going to have to go through. I feel like Wendy has not gotten a break since she's been on this show. It's been a few seasons now and they treat her like she's a gnat, like she's a nuisance, like they really don't want her to be there. Giselle lets us know that she called her cheating ass uh, Pastor X to find out about the whole shrine thing. And I feel like that's so disrespectful. She doesn't have her own storyline. So here she is and she's going to hang on this crap. Speaking to someone who couldn't even be faithful to her. Or who was a part of a storyline and didn't even show up for her. But this is what Giselle does. And this is what the network allows her to get away with. Mia says that NECA is smart. And she likes her. We then have Wendy. We see Wendy out with Eddie and they talk about the Pickle Bell event. Eddie said he enjoyed it until things went left. Wendy says that she doesn't understand how it got to that point, but she believes that NECA's motive is to attack her in the group. I agree because NECA could have pulled Wendy to the side and talked about this, but NECA spoke to everyone about this prior to speaking to Wendy. Wendy was like the last person that she went to. She told Robin, who she knew would tell Giselle. She told Mia. She said some things at some point to Ashley. Like she was telling different people different things. So she could have easily, if she was really that concerned and didn't want to throw Wendy under the bus she could have had this talk with uh Wendy I feel like Wendy's antics and how she doesn't answer questions or she goes around in a circle like when the producer said were they friends or not it's a simple question instead of saying like how oh well you know we all have people that we know that we don't know and all this the, the, the bottom line is they know each other in passing. 
They aren't friends. They don't know each other like personally. I'm not going to go back and forth on it because it's pointless. We then see NECA. NECA and her husband are at the OBGYN to discuss fertility. As she walks in, she is complaining because he's not moving fast enough for her. Uh, he's trying to close the umbrella and she feels like this is a tactic of avoidance because he didn't want to come. She has made their marriage about having the baby. We see her on the phone. I don't know if she was talking to her sister or mom or whatever, but she was talking to some ladies about the whole baby thing. She says that originally she didn't have intentions of having a baby anytime soon, that she felt like she could have plenty of time, but now she feels like they need to. They then, as they're in the office waiting on the doctor, they talk about the event. NECA claims that she feels horrible about how it came out. Um, I don't feel like NECA feels that way because she had plenty of time, as I said earlier, to discuss this with Wendy. But I just feel like NECA and Wendy are both fake. I'm sorry, I have to call it the way I see it. NECA did not even need to bring this on the show since she claimed that it happened before Ashley's event. Um, the doctor comes in, they talk, they're all from Africa, or I think they're all from Nigeria, actually. Um, his sperm count is low, but the doctor said that he's not worried about it because it's not that the volume is low and he feels like that's something they could, they could work on. They just need to have more sex. I would think that if his sperm count is low that you do need to work on it. Um, but I guess this doctor feels like they can conceive naturally. He said to give it like six months. Uh, he's talking. She she shuts him down. I do not like how NECA talks to her husband. I don't know if she does this because of the show, but she's kind of demeaning to him when she speaks. Just something I noticed. We have Mia. Mia and Gordon are meeting up for a counseling session. Mia speaks about the different financial difficulties that they've had and the changes like they've had to make as far as downsizing and all this other stuff and how it's changed their relationship. She said that Gordon is working more and she wants him to work less and spend more time with the kids. I don't really feel like that's the truth because Mia wants that money. Mia misses that money. Mia often talks about that money. So to act like you don't want your husband to find another way to bring more finances in the house, I just don't buy it. She said that she got an attorney at one point. She was talking to an attorney because she was considering a divorce. And he said that hearing that he just didn't see that coming and he's willing to do whatever he has to do to maintain his family. The counselor asked like, what got you all to this point? And she said for her, she grew up with a lot of arguments and stuff like that. And she always made a promise to herself that she would not have that around their kids. And they were arguing a lot. I wonder how bad these arguments got. We then hear about how they sold the company. The attorney who was handling it had the money in escrow. He ended up getting disbarred. They sued him. And as a result, he ended up um, killing himself. But I don't think that they could just put that on themselves. But um, apparently Mia kind of blames herself, which we hear more about this later. She said she was worried about Gordon and his family. She's worried about the money, in my opinion, despite what she's saying. And overall, we can just tell they are not on the same page. We then see the ladies getting ready um, to leave for Austin. We see the different preparations that they're making as far as their kids are concerned. Wendy and NECA are in the airport. And at this point, they're being cordial. It seems like everybody is being cordial, even Candace. Um, I also feel like it's being a little fake because there's no way if I was Wendy that you would be spreading lies about my mama and think I'd be okay with it. Ashley breaks up the cars by signs. We have Mia, Robin, Candace, and Wendy in one car. And another car, there's Giselle, Ashley, Karen, and NECA. Robin and Candace both say that they're uncomfortable with being in the car with each other. For some reason, Giselle keeps trying to push Karen and Robin together. I wish Giselle would shut up and focus on her crap, but that's not what's going to happen. Giselle is the queen of making it about everybody else because Giselle has nothing to give except for a fake boyfriend. What episode is this? And we only saw the boyfriend one time. Yeah, it's fake. Um... Where am I? I haven't forgotten what Giselle has done, even though this entire cast has. Karen says that Robin is a liar when it comes to Ron 
Juan and I say that she's a liar when it comes to Giselle too. Robin is willing to lie to protect those that she loves. Not saying that there's anything necessarily wrong with you protecting people, but stop lying in our faces. The ladies arrive at the hotel where we see Ashley's penthouse and she says that Robin has one too because of all the things that she's been through. Karen makes some comments about how, look, I'd rather be in a little cubby hole than just be gifted something because I've been through stuff like that. Like, I don't want a pity room. Uh, Karen says that she's still undecided about Robin because Robin is not being truthful. Mia then asks about the itinerary. They go to their rooms and then they, they're told to meet at the pool. So the rooms to me are very underwhelming compared to Ashley's. Cut to Mia. Mia is talking to Robin about the attorney and his suicide because something similar happened to Robin. I feel like Mia is using this as an opportunity to get closer to Robin. She says that she's blaming herself, but I still don't understand all of this whole situation with Gordon and Mia and this attorney. So I can't really get into it. The point is that she is using this again as a a woe is Mia thing because she's talking about how she's been having panic attacks and tears but I can never believe what Mia says because of how she always turns things to feel sorry for her or something has happened to her and then she manages to cry but she turns it on and off so easily but Robin just tells her like at the end of the day you can't blame yourself you're probably not the only family that he's done this to and you just can't take all of that on which is good advice I did like that advice we see the ladies at the pool um when Wendy Candace and Karen are talking Wendy looks really good in her outfit um they want to know how Wendy's doing. Wendy says she's good, but at this point, she just has no interest in what NECA is bringing. NECA and Giselle then walk in. Um, so does Ashley. I didn't write that down, but so does Ashley. Along. Okay. I can't even understand my notes. Okay. Karen um, talks about Giselle not talking to Candace. Candace says she wants to ignore that. So she wants Candace says she wants to ignore me. Like she doesn't want to talk to me because she wants to see my black ass disappear, but yet I'm still here. Basically, Candace has let Giselle know, like, look, I know what you're trying to do. I know that you're trying to ice me out and I'm saying it in front of you so you can't say I said it backstage or in confessionals. I'm telling you that I see you. Giselle says for her mental um for her mental health and the safety of her children, she chooses not to participate in any capacity when it comes to Candace. Giselle to me is taking this to another level because she really is trying to ice Candace out. And although Candace has said really unsavory things to Giselle, maybe because I think some of what Candace said is spot on because let's be clear, um, Giselle is afforded some things just because of her color. We're not gonna sit here and act like it isn't happening because it is and it has happened in this show. Um, <sighs> Candace's mistake sometimes is the way she goes about it because she gives Giselle room to just run with stuff, especially for the purposes of this show. Candace then flips it right back on her and says, you've said some things as well and you've lied. I really don't think that the cast understands or cares to understand the severity of the situation with Chris. These people act like what Giselle did wasn't wrong and it wasn't detrimental and it didn't harm his relationships, could have potentially prevented him from getting certain jobs, could have made it an issue with his, his ex-mom as far as their kids concerned. Like there are things that have happened behind this, but I feel like the only way that Giselle will really get it is if Candace pulls a Michael and sues her ass. Giselle is playing victim and they're going to continue to let her get away with it. We find out Giselle was uncomfortably quiet during Pickleball because she was concerned about NECA's allegations. What a perfect way to segue into Wendy. Giselle managed to get the heat off of her very quickly. Um, Giselle says she isn't into witchcraft stuff. 
Candace says, say what you want, but that's a harsh allegation. NECA says, it's not an allegation, she said it. NECA then says, never in 40 years of life has anyone ever threatened me the way Wendy's mom did and threatened to put my name in a shrine. But I thought NECA was 35. Where do we get the 40 years of life from? Um, I know that that I've messed up on my age before, like maybe uh, uh, I've been a, a certain age for a couple months and I might slip up and say something, but I'm not missing it by five years. So that's really interesting. Wendy's mom uh, did say something about Mia. It's pointed out by, who was it? I think Giselle pointed it out. Wendy said, yeah, she did, but it wasn't anything like that. We, Mia arrives right when this is being said. Wendy then reads the message that she put up on social media where she said she was ugly inside out and her crater face and all these other things. And then she said that uh, something about Mia and Peter, Holy Ghost fire on them and thunderstorms. That is not witchcraft. And for Giselle, who has previously been a pastor's first wife, She's just showing her ignorance because, come on now, y'all are really, really reaching with this. Wendy and Neca go back and forth on if they know each other, and I don't care about this. They both said they know each other, then they said they don't know each other. Then there's this whole thing about this friend, uh, something with the L, and uh, Libra or something like that. And Wendy's like, that's not my friend, that's my sister's friend, and yada, gotta go. And she was friends, and they talked for... Uh, 58 minutes and on, it was on this date and now they're not friends anymore and I'm just like is this all we have Wendy is lying just like NECA she knows uh the girl the the girl with the L name I think it's Levy or something like that L-E-B-E -E. and they Bravo proved it because Bravo showed the clip so you got caught in your lie Wendy which is now gonna make everything else that you say look like a, a lie but then again, NECA has lied too. So now, according to a lot of the cast members, Wendy is just jealous of NECA. And I feel like I am over this. I don't want to talk about it anymore. So much so that this review up from me is trash. I'm sorry. I, I apologize. I know it's trash. Because I was sitting there like, this is such a waste of an hour of my life. Why am I, why am I reviewing this? Why are we being forced to watch this? Neither one of these ladies are going to agree. Neither one of these ladies are going to come to the same conclusion. Wendy, tell your mother to stop interfering. She means well, but she's causing more problems for you. Because I don't think she said the whole shrine thing and all that other stuff. But I do think at some point she did threaten that lady or say something to somebody in her family some kind of way. And now it's being used against you. So tell your mother to sit somewhere and to be quiet and to stop with her Instagram fingers and Twitter fingers and for you to just be able to be on the show. Wendy, if you're going to continue to be here, you have to call a spade a spade and stop dancing around stuff and stop giving people this, this time to be able to malign you because you're not being honest. Be honest, speak your truth, and shut them down. They're going to continue to talk, but if you, if you spray yourself, if you put it all out there like, look, yes, I knew this girl. Yes, she was friends with my sister, and at one point, I did want my daughter to look up to her because I saw things in her from the times that I did see her with my sister that I thought she was a good person. Get ahead of it. But right now, Wendy has taken an L, and so has NECA. The Nigerians are losing on this episode. Let me be clear, okay? Because I don't want y'all coming for me in the comments. I had many African friends, um, Nigerian, Ghanaian, Sierra Leonean, uh, probably said that wrong. Some from Sierra Leone. Uh, I have an array. I, I'm not even gonna, cause if they're watching, they're gonna be mad I didn't say their place. But my point is, respect the culture and don't bring this mess onto television where you have given the opportunity for people who do not understand it to make fun of it and poke at it. Because that's what's being done and it's being used for a storyline and it's unfortunate. You all let me know your thoughts down below. If there's something that I didn't say because there was a lot here that I just was not about to take notes on, please put it in the comments. Until next time.